Okay, we're going to discuss the small animal anesthesia machine. The first thing that we need to do is look at our tubes and we're gonna set this up as a rebreathing circuit. So I have three different tubes here that were discussed in your book. We have the small pediatric tubing and you can see how much smaller that is from the adult or the larger animal size. And when I mean larger animal, I mean seven kilograms or more. You can see the diameter difference in the two. These are called Y tubing. Um, then we have this one here, which is one tube. And you can see there's a tube actually within a tube if you focus in on that. So basically it's the same theory, it's just one tube going to the animal. So the inspiration tube within and then expiration around. And this keeps actually the um, warmer, it keeps warmer and the humidity within the body. So this one's actually a newer type F circuit is what they're called. So you can see that there. All right, we have different rebreathing bags or some people call these reservoir bags, okay? This one here is a one liter. Then we have a two liter and a three liter bag. And then we have our endotracheal tube. All right, so I'm going to just grab the larger diameter Y tubing and I'm going to connect it to my machine. They, this is the inspiratory inlet, and then here's our expiratory. So breathing in, breathing out. So we just basically attach those to the machine. Okay, remember, this is gonna be that circle where they actually rebreathe. Okay, you can see I can come all the way down to my Y piece here. That actually is what would be connected to the endotracheal tube. So I'm just gonna add that on the bottom here so we can see the full circuit. So I've attached it. I'm just gonna set that off to the side. Okay, then we are going to pick, let's just say we pick our two liter bag and that bag attaches right here. And we'll go through this whole circuit here in a second. Okay, so how does gas flow through this machine and make it a rebreathing circuit? We have our oxygen that comes through from our oxygen source, comes through this green tubing here. And if we follow that tubing in the back of the machine, you're gonna see the green tubing comes into our flow meter. This is our flow meter here. So the oxygen comes in and we're gonna turn that on. I don't have it connected to oxygen right now, but you would read the center of the ball and that reads liters per minute. That's how many liters of oxygen that, that animal is gonna receive per minute. Right next to it, we do have a flush valve. Now this grabs um, oxygen or air from outside, not from our tube, and it'll flush it right to the animal. It doesn't go through this system. After oxygen leaves the flow meter, you can see this white or clear tubing in the back. Focus on that. And you can follow that, and that will go to the inlet of the vaporizer. And actually, if you look inside here, it actually says inlet right there. Oxygen is a carrier gas, so it's gonna flow over the vaporizer. This is called a vaporizer that houses our anesthetic gas, and this is isofluorine. You can see here the amount of isofluorine that's currently in this machine. So oxygen comes in, it picks up some of that gas. It's a liquid form, turns it into a gas vaporizer. Then it goes to the outlet. If you look here closely, it says outlet. It's gonna go through this port here, and it runs up this tubing then, on the back here, it comes up, and this is the fresh gas inlet. So this is brand new gas, it's fresh gas. It's gonna come up. This is a one-way flutter valve. So it's just gonna allow this gas to go straight to the patient through our Y-tubing. 
goes through our endotracheal tube, then the animal, you know, inspiratory, then expiratory, so the gas is now coming out, and it comes to the other side of our Y-tubing. Up here, another one-way flutter valve, so that closes so that the gas doesn't go the wrong direction. It only allows the gas to come out. And this is called our pop-off valve. This is where the decision is made, essentially, is that gas exhausted so it's no longer good, or is that gas still good and can be reused? If it's no good, it's gonna come out the pop-off valve and go to that fresh air canister. And we'll talk about that in a second. If it's good and can be reused, it's going to come down the side here and go into our CO2 absorber. So those granules in there will absorb the CO2. Then once it passes through here, it's going to come back up and into our reservoir bag. So that's where it's going to be stored. It's still good gas. It can still be used. All the CO2 is taken out of it, so the animal's not gonna rebreathe that. So the animal then, when it breathes in again, that from the reservoir bag or rebreathing bag, it'll come back up into our Y tubing and go back to the animal. Okay, let's go back to our pop-off valve. When the gas is no good, it's expired, it's done, it's not gonna do anything else, any more good. It's going to come out this tubing again down to this fresh air canister. And this canister then will filter that and then be pushed out into the room air. These are only good until they're, they've um, gained about 50 grams, so we make sure that we constantly weigh them before and after every procedure. And you never want to occlude the bottom of these because this is where it's actually let out. All right.